merits and pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us and always act in accordance with what is best for our community, humanity, and our fellow citizens. We gather together intent on doing good work. We seek to represent fairly and well those who have given us this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding and wisdom. We seek to serve with respect for all. May our personal faiths give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. We need to serve our community, to use our resources well and wisely, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future and the rights and needs of both individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts. May we act wisely and well. Dear Lord, enable us to be respectful of our differences, not threatened by them. May we grow in understanding of our own motives, knowing that people often act out of their own fears. May I be a force for replacing fear with insight, helping us all to be patient and kind as we talk. Strength, real strength, can always find compromise. Working together, may we find a common ground. O oh Lord, enable us to move forward with a shared purpose. May we see what is truly important and unite, unites us, focusing on that to banish roadblocks of ego and fear. It is community that provides the essential safety net, protecting each of us in the face of loss and tragedy. It is our community that brings out the neighbor in us all. Today, I will do something to build my community, making it stronger for all my neighbors and myself. Amen. To all who seek hope, peace, and prosperity, and those who are committed to it, we dedicate this song. Your 
holy word guide us with your way for life is filled with wanting terms we have often lost our way all we ask is that you your patience everybody. Good afternoon and thank you all for coming to the Rhode Island Interfaith Coalition to Reduce Poverty's eighth annual vigil. We are so happy to see so many friends and allies here, tireless advocates for economic justice both inside and outside the State House. We extend a special welcome to Governor Gina Raimondo, Senate President Teresa Pava Weed and Speaker of the House Nicholas Mattiallo, and look forward to their greetings later in the program. We have been called together today by the sounds of the Sofa, the prayers of the Mufti, and the song of the Divine Providence Singers. These voices echo together in this ch chamber reminding us that on issues of poverty, we, the faith community, speak with one voice 
stronger together and more beautiful because of our diversity. Since our inception in 2008, the Rhode Island Interfaith Coalition to Reduce Poverty, representing multi-faiths and anti-poverty organizations, has worked for bills and budgets that will achieve economic security for all Rhode Islanders. We are proud to have shared in that work with so many of you. But sadly, we are not where we need to be. 19.8% of children, almost one in five children in Rhode Island, live in poverty. Overall, 14.3% of Rhode Islanders live in poverty. That's 145,000 of us, a number unchanged since last year. As people of faith and as anti-poverty advocates, a flat lining 14.3%, one out of every seven Rhode Islanders, is simply unacceptable. Grounded in our values, we believe all Rhode Islanders deserve the fundamentals. A safe and affordable home, adequate nutritious food, quality equal education, accessible health care, and decent, de decent wages with their work. Sadly today, too many of us lack these basics. Today, we ask our elected officials to take action in four crucial areas. Number one, fully support struggling working families in Rhode Island. Number two, let education, the most essential pathway out of poverty, start early and continue for a lifetime. Number three, provide safe homes for all. Number four, protect the needs of low-income seniors and people with disabilities. I invite you to read at your leisure the full legislative platform that you were given, but please allow me to highlight a few areas. First, thank you to all our allies in the State House for your good work last session to increase the state's earned income tax credit. Your efforts put an additional $6 million back into the pockets of working families in our state, strengthening our economy and bolstering our local communities. We applaud this wonderful step, but we must go further. While Connecticut has a 27.5% state EITC, and Massachusetts a 23% state EITC, Rhode Island is only at 12.5%. Today, we call on our state leaders to pass a 20% state earned income tax credit to support struggling, working low and moderate income families in Rhode Island. Second, we turn to our youngest Rhode Islanders, whose faces remind us of future possibilities and call us to our present responsibilities. We now know how formative the early years are in children's development. Yet many families in our state remain unable to afford the quality childcare and educational opportunities their children need and deserve. We call on our state leaders to expand the number of pre-K and Head Start slots and increase eligibility for child care assistance, ensuring that all children in Rhode Island have access to safe, high-quality child care and early education. Finally, we ask you to state take special notice of the public transit needs of seniors and people with disabilities. Currently, 10,500 low-income people with disabilities and 3,250 low-income seniors 
rely on the No Fear Senior Disabled Bus Pass to access their daily needs. Budget challenges within the Rhode Island Public Transit Authority threaten the future viability of this program. We were relieved and pleased that the proposed fare change was delayed for this year and thank the governor for helping to make this happen. As you enact a budget, we encourage you to provide funding that will support the continuation of the No Fair Senior Disabled Bus Pass. Today is our eighth vigil. We have again gathered to wish you a productive session and to offer you our support with the understanding that alleviating poverty must be a top, top public policy priority. As you face the difficult decisions this legislative session will bring, please take the voice of wisdom and compassion as your guide. All Rhode Islanders need and deserve a pathway out of poverty and a road to economic security. 14.3% poverty rate is the story for this year, but it need not be the story for next year. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to ask Senator Harold Metz to introduce our honored elected officials. Senator Metz, thank you so much for all you have done over the years to reduce poverty in Rhode Island. Yes, thank you. <laughs> to God be the glory, great things Amen. he has Amen. done. And I just want to thank everyone for being here this afternoon. And, and I want to say that it's truly an honor for me to join you today in my due role as a, as a deacon and a legislator. As a legislator, let me say that I'm really strengthened by this event. It reminds us of why we serve and the challenges in our communities. And we are certainly very grateful for your prayers. I pray for these three leaders, the governor, the Senate president, and the speaker and the members here because I know how hard a job they have. And, e and, and even for myself, I pray that God gives us the wisdom that we can have a balance in our investments that we're not only investing in business for our, a healthy economy, but we also have a balance in human capital. And that's so the Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. And as you pray, I want you to keep that in mind to pray that we have the wisdom to have that balance between the business community and also investing in human capital. I see firsthand the challenges of poverty in my community. Through my service as a senator, through my ministry at church, at the food pantry and in prison ministry, these experiences help me, uh, help me have a, a greater understanding and compassion about what impacts public policy on individuals wrestling with poverty. We have to be the voice for the people that don't have a voice. They can't hire people to come up here and advocate for them. So that's why it's so important that you're here. So we are called by God to serve those in need. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I want to, uh, one of the things that I read in the car before I come in the building is Matthew 25. Most of you know it. And, and also Psalm 82. I'm not going to be judged by my titles. I've had many of them. Senator, deacon, uh, coach, teacher, assistant principal, uh, representative. I've had a lot of titles. But the Lord's not going to judge me by that. He's going to want to know, what have I done for the least? I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was in prison and you came unto me. I know how I'm going to be judged. And then... I always reflect on Psalm 82, verse 3 and 4, where it says, Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. So today, we begin a new session, and may, and may we always seek to keep the mission of God has called us in the foremost of our hearts. We are blessed to have so many uh, religious leaders, 
uh, legislators, many of my colleagues, and many people from the community with us this afternoon. And as we seek to create change and reduce poverty in this state, we look forward to working with the leadership across both chambers of the legislature as well as the executive branch. I have the honor this afternoon of introducing a few of the state leaders who work has had impact on helping to reduce poverty and who remain committed to addressing to addressing the, uh, the changes, the challenges we face. Excuse me. Governor Gina Raimondo will be speaking first. Governor Raimondo is beginning her second year as governor this week. Following her remarks, uh, Senate President uh, Teresa Piper Weed. Uh, so when I get down, I can always go to her. She listens. She's a wonderful leader, and she represents Newport, Jamestown, since 1992, and will bring greetings. She has served as Senate President in the Senate since 2009. Then uh, Speaker Nicholas Mattiello will offer some remarks. Speaker Matt, uh, Mattiello has represented Cranston in the House since 2006 and served as Speaker since 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Governor Gina Raimondo. Thank you, Senator Metz. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. It's an appropriate way for us to begin the new session. Uh, and special thanks to the Senate President, who I'm quite sure has never missed one of these and is a steady advocate. And also, thank you to uh, the speaker. The three of us have worked very hard this year, last year, to do our best in difficult fiscal times to make sure that we don't forget the most vulnerable, the seniors, the children, new immigrants, and people who deserve opportunity in Rhode Island. It is my mission as your governor and my pledge to you to begin each day recommitted to working harder than the day before to make sure that Rhode Island is a place of opportunity for everybody, a place where no one is left behind, a place where we have affordable schools that work, a place where public education works, a place where RIPTA is affordable, a place where there are plentiful jobs for everyone and people have the skills they need to be successful in the high-wage jobs of the 21st century. I think we did make some progress last year, and I, I give great credit to the Speaker and Senate President, and I thank them for their leadership and partnership, and I see many legislators here, all of us work together. We were able to raise the minimum wage. Monday, you know, a lot of 40,000 people got a raise in Rhode Island. That's a good thing. So. Credit. Millions of dollars in the pocket of hardworking families and millions of dollars into our economy. We're able to provide a scholarship fund, Rhode Island's Promise. Half the students at CCRI are able to go for free on account of those last dollar scholarships. Now, we've done that, and frankly, a lot of the reason we're able to do that is because of your guidance and your prayers and your insistence and advocacy. You're smiling. Yeah, you keep us honest. It's tough. It's tough. We have a deficit. Deficit every year. I just turned to the Senate President and the Speaker. I said, these all sound good, but we, where do we find the money? But you keep us honest and stay on us. Uh, despite the progress and despite the fact that the economy is better and we are pulling ourselves out of the woods, there's more to be done. Right? Like probably a lot of you over the holidays, my family and I spend time at a coat drive, at a food drive, at a toy drive. We gave away over 2,500 meals to hungry people a few weeks ago at the convention center. We're not done with our work. That means right there we have more work to do. So we commit ourselves again to you to work earnestly, uh, without ego, and in the service of the people to make sure that we have a place of opportunity where people have access to education and skills and transportation and safe communities. And I would ask you, uh, for your part, continue to advocate, and in all sincerity, ask you for your prayers, because these are difficult times, no decisions are easy, and we need uh, courage and wisdom to do our jobs. And if we work in concert together with your ideas and with your prayer, 
I know we're going to continue to make progress for every family in Rhode Island. So thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. God bless. Please join me now in welcoming uh, my President of the Senate, M. Teresa Piva-Wee. Thank you, Senator Metz. And how lucky am I to have a colleague like Senator Metz. Um, Governor, you mentioned that these folks keep you honest. Senator Metz keeps me honest every day. I want to also recognize, though, um, what has been mentioned, and that is the bipartisan nature of the chamber. And with that, uh, and of this event, I want to recognize, first and foremost, uh, Leader Dennis Algier joins us here today. Leader Algier. I also want to recognize the other senators that have joined us. Uh, many of them are up there. Senator Pichardo, Senator Coyne, Senator Reptakis, Senator Miller, and Senator Satchel. Welcome, all of you. They all advocate very hard. I also want to take a moment to recognize someone who I know you all know, who's a former senator who's joining us here today for a special uh, event, and that's Senator Rhoda Perry. Senator Perry, thank you for being here. I see that there are many religious leaders here, so I want to welcome all of them and say that it is so beautiful to recognize our common ground rather than our differences at an event like this. I also want to represent, recognize Mayor Diosa, who I had the opportunity to get to know earlier uh, this fall on a trip the speaker and I went on to Israel, and truly a true advocate and from our poorest community. Welcome, Mayor Diosa. It is a pleasure to join you again this year for this event, and it is important that we're all mindful as we start the business of our legislative session of the causes for which you are here to advocate. As I mentioned yesterday, and I will continue to mention and has been mentioned here today, I sincerely believe that investment in our education system that serves all Rhode Islanders is critical not only to the health of the overall economy, as has been mentioned, but also to providing tools to lift people out of poverty. And we have made that in the Senate a priority for this session. And this investment begins even before birth with initiatives uh, such as the Home Visiting Program. And I want to recognize one of the people here today who is the strongest advocate for that program, and that's Elizabeth Burke Bryan from Kids Count. Elizabeth? More than 1,700 Rhode Island families will gain supports through that program. I will be resubmitting the Home Visiting Act, which supports this program again this year. I've mentioned our elementary and secondary schools, but I also want to echo the governor's comment that beyond our elementary and secondary, we need to ensure that beyond high school, our colleges and our universities are preparing our students for success in today's economy. And further, what I think is important, which the Institute, Poverty Institute has been a leader on, is investment in adult education, which is also necessary, as there is still a waiting list for people who want to get a high school equivalency credential. And we will continue to work with you to eliminate that list. We also want to, I want to state my ongoing support and the support of the Senate today for child care assistance because I recognize that child care assistance is critical for those of you who want to acquire skills in order to get reemployed or to remain in a job. New federal resources have recently been provided to the Department of Labor and Training that will assist working families. But the new legislative session also brings new challenges and new opportunities in areas. And we're very mindful of all of those that are facing economic hardships. I am very concerned about imposing a fee on elderly disabled RIPTA passengers. And I am committed to looking at alternative funding as part of our budget discussions this session.
We increased the Rhode Island rate last year, as has been said. But our state's assistance for these low-income workers remains well behind our neighbors at 12.5 percent. I believe that we need to do better. This session will also bring an opportunity to again improve our criminal justice system through a justice reinvestment initiative. The governor, the speaker, and I and our respective offices working together with the police and the courts and the administration recognize that investment through diversion programs can ensure that individuals who would be better served through treatment rather than a car incarceration can access the services that they need. It is important because that will make our community safer, it saves money, and it also makes a world of difference for all individuals who are impacted. And finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the work that the governor and the speaker and myself did last year to reinvent the state's Medicaid programs. I want to reassure you that the General Assembly will continue to monitor the impact of those changes and ensure that within the time frames that we set forth in the legislative bills last year in the budget, that in fact, care and the delivery of services, that not just the money is saved, but that the care and the delivery of services is improved. I look forward to working together with all of you in the months ahead to address the challenges facing our state and seize the opportunities to help those that are most in need. As the governor said, and I know the speaker will say, and I will join them in saying it, this is a difficult budget and resources are limited. But I am committed to doing the best that we can and working together with you, we will make it through this session to improve the lives of all Rhode Islanders. Thank you. Please join me now in welcoming the Speaker of the House, Nicholas Mattiello to the podium. Speaker. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with all of you uh, as part of this vigil for the interfaith community. There's one thing that I, I know we all have in common, and it's that we care for people. If you're here, you care for people. So thank you for that. I want to just recognize a few folks, and I want to thank the governor and the Senate president. I want to thank our Secretary of State, Nellie Gorbea, our General Treasurer, Seth Magaziner, for being here and all of my wonderful colleagues and friends in the House of Representatives. Representative Dave Bennett, Representative Teresa Tanzi, Representative Aaron Regenberg, Representative Mia Ackerman, Representative Edia Jello, Representative Bob Lancia, Representative Joe Solomon, Representative Doreen Costa, Representative Carlos Tabone, Chairman Joe McNamara, Representative Deb Ruggiero, and Chairman Bob Craven, as well as all, all of my other friends and colleagues that are out there. Mary Messier also. Thank you for being here. All of our elected officials work diligently with compassion for all people. Our goal, my goal, and I said this last year and I think it was a little misconstrued, is that we no longer need a safety net. Now, we'll always have an appropriate safety net and we'll always care for our folks. But when we get the economy to a point where everybody's thriving, where every family has a wage earner that is successfully feeding the family and everybody is doing well and well fed and our schools are doing well and they're conducive to appropriate learning, our children are learning, our children are well fed, our children are thriving, families are happy. That will be the day we don't need a safety net, and at that time, our safety net will justifiably be smaller. Until we get there, the state will provide the appropriate safety net. But we want our community to thrive, and we want each individual family to thrive. So as we move forward, we are going to we pledge to take care of our needs, 
and we pledge to give the community the tools so that families are successful, so that folks are successful. Folks are happy, well cared for, have appropriate uh, health care, and a great education, and safe and affordable and appropriate housing. Those are our goals, and we're, as policy leaders, with your help and prayers and advice and counsel and prodding, are going to try our best to enact policies to best serve our community and all of our friends with compassion. So thank you for having me here, and let's all work together to make a great society. The responses to these invocations are found in your program. Our God, the guide of humanity, let your spirit rule the elected leaders of this state of Rhode Island so that their actions may be prompted by love of justice and bear fruit in goodness and peace. Guide our elected officials to work for the welfare of all and to work with special diligence to reduce the impact of poverty in our state that holds too many of our brothers and sisters in its grasp and stands in the way of our shared prosperity. Bless, our leaders with civic courage. Bless the work of our legislators to work for a society where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Bless our leaders of and you have endowed humans with noble powers. Help our public officials to use those powers wisely and with compassion. Bless our with all these of wisdom and compassion. We stand together today with the recognition that humans have been given the freedom to choose between good and evil, life and death. May our leaders choose life and good. That our children may inherit the blessings of dignity and freedom, prosperity, and peace. Wow! Look at this! This is so cool! And we're so glad that you're all here. When we were planning the conference this year, we wanted to invite someone who would come and just give us a good kick in the posterior and encourage us to move forward with the work because there's so much to be done. And so it's my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker today from the far regions of northern Rhode Island in Woonsocket, the Bishop Harrison Gonzalez. Bishop Gonzalez. Hello, everybody. Greetings to all the government officials, all the faith leaders. It really is an honor for me to stand in this majestic hall, proudly representing our Buddhists, our Muslims, our Hindu, our Jews, our Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, many other world religions today as we stand united because together we take a stand and say we care and we must do more for those that are what we call the poorest among us. Today, we pray for you, the leaders, folks that, uh, that will, make it, will be making these huge decisions this year. We are asking God and we lovingly encourage you to take up the sometimes unpopular but always righteous cause of the least of these. Whether you are a person of faith or maybe it's your sense of civic moral obligation to do what is good unto your fellow man. We applaud your willingness to serve the good people of Rhode Island. There is so much work to do. Meditate on this. No one but you, no one but you can propose policies, can legislate action to reduce poverty. No one but you. And we're asking you today, and as we pray for you, we ask that you govern from a place of compassion, of care, and of wisdom. I live and I minister in a place called Woonsocket, Rhode Island, with the Washington Post called Food Stamp Town, where one-third of our population depends on SNAP services. And as a pastor of a largely working poor and middle class, lower middle class congregation, I can tell you with absolute certainty the decisions you make, 
And the things that you choose not to do this year, me and my people, we're going to feel it. We're going to feel everything you do and don't do. We pray for you. Now, through the course of the year, you're going to be hearing from people. They'll call you. They'll be sending you emails. They'll reach out to you in social media. They'll show up at your office and knock on your door. I'm not here to talk for those. I'm here to speak about those people who you'll read about in statistics and maybe only see in headlines while people sit in judgment of them and say, what's wrong with those people? Why can't they do better? Mm. I'm here to speak up for the kid that goes to my church on Sunday morning and we give him a snack and he puts a portion of his snack in his coat pocket so they can have something to eat later that day. I'm here to speak for a girl named Emily who has to work the streets and befriend unkind and abusive men just so that she can have a place to stay with her daughter. I'm here to speak up for Matt, a military veteran who began to self-medicate himself and unfortunately got himself a criminal record, but now he no longer qualifies for housing. He's homeless because he didn't receive the help when he was reaching out for it. I'm here to speak for the rare two-parent families that visit our meal sites. They come to us and they say we need food, and I say, don't you both work? They say yes, but the system tells us we make too much money. We make too much money, but we can't afford the bills we have. We can't afford child care. We can't afford all of that, plus feed our family. Sadly, the American dream for some of these people is not the white house and white picket fence and the car. Sadly, their American dream has become to get on welfare and stay on it. My friend, Pastor Rebecca from the River Methodist Church in Woonsocket told me, Bishop, addiction doesn't cause poverty. It's poverty that causes addiction. In my world, the face of poverty is not the person in the street corner holding a sign and a cup. In my world, it's the hungry kid that goes to school so he can have at least one good meal. In my world, Poverty is, a vet, poverty is a homeless veteran who served her country and his country with distinction and honor and came back to a broken system. In my world, poverty is a working class family that has to choose between paying their bills and eating a meal. In Woonsocket, we see it firsthand. Poverty eats away at human dignity. It's difficult to be a proud American when all you know is poverty. I am the seventh born child of eight children born to Reverend Jesus and Digna Gonzalez. Mom and Dad did the best they could, but sometimes, baby, it got hard. It got a little bit rough. But we'd go to Dad's church and sing some old hymns that lifted our spirits. One of the songs that we used to sing happens to be the Reverend, the late Reverend Dr. Luther King's uh, favorite song. We sang it like this. Mi Señor, sálvame, guíame hacia ti en angustia y dolor cúbreme. En la noche de tormenta, llévame a tu luz, tómame, mi precioso Señor. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak. And I am warm through the storms, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me talk of poverty and brokenness, I'm here to announce there is still hope. 
We can make a better Rhode Island. You can make a difference this legislative session. You are our local champions, and we need you to be better than ever this year. I pray your wisdom, I pray your sound judgment, your compassion, and I pray that you start today. Please know that there are going to be moments during what you're doing where the right thing doesn't always line up with what's best for your career. I'm going to ask you please to follow your convictions, not your survival instincts. Please stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Please fight for those who have given up the fight saying there's nothing worth fighting for. Please protect every child. Please embrace the stranger. Not simply by giving handouts, because dignity comes when you're fallen by a hand up. In my faith tradition, we look at Psalms 82, 3, and 4, and I'm going to just read it from the Message Bible as I close. You are the defender of the defenderless. You make sure that the underdog gets a fair break. Your job is to stand for the powerless and to prosecute all those who exploit them. Thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. God bless Rhode Island. God bless America. Now, you all have some work to do. After the reading of each set of names, as a reader steps from the podium, the next reader steps up. Please join us in the refrain, we speak with one voice. Now, I'm not going to throw you out there. We're going to practice first. One, two, three. We speak with one voice. All right. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, President Barack Obama. We May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Senator Jack Reed, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative James Langevin, Representative David Cicilline. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Governor Gina Raimondo, Lieutenant Governor Daniel McKee. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Secretary of State Nellie Gorbia, General Treasurer Seth Magaziner, Attorney General Peter Kilmartin, we, we speak with one voice. voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senate President Teresa Pavia Weed, Majority Leader Dominic Brugera, Minority Leader Dennis Alger, we, we speak, speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. The future Senator for District 11, Senator Stephen Ashambo, Senator Frank Chicone. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator William Conley, Jr., 
Senator Mark Cody. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Cynthia Armour Coyne, Senator Elizabeth Crowley. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Daniel Daponte, Senator Luis De Palma. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator James Doyle, Senator Walter Felak. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Senator Paul Fogarty, Senator Hannah Gallo, Senator Mark Gee. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Senator Gail Goldwyn, Senator Mary Ellen Goodwin, Senator Paul Jabour. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Nicholas Kettle, Senator Frank Lombardi, Senator Frank Lombardo. We speak, we speak with, with one voice. voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Aaron Lynch Prada. Senator Michael McCaffrey, Senator Harold Metz. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Joshua Miller, Senator Elaine Morgan, Senator Donald Nesselbush. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Edward O'Neill, Senator Ryan Pearson, Senator Roger Picard. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator Juan Pichardo, Senator Leonidas Reptakis, Senator Adam Satchel. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Senator James Sheehan, Senator Susan Sosnowski, Senator William Walaska, we please speak, speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. House Speaker Nicholas, Ma Nicholas Mattiello, Majority Leader John D. Simone, Minority Leader Brian Newberry. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Marvin Abney, Representative Mia Ackerman. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Edith Agello, Representative Joseph Almeida, Representative Greg Amore. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representatives Samuel Azinaro, Representative Jean Philippe Barros, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative David Bennett, Representative Krister Blazeski, Representative Dennis Canario. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative John Carnival, Representative Lauren Carson, Representative Stephen Casey. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Michael Chippendale, 
Representative Alpha Kofafio, Representative Dore Marie Kovad. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Gregory Costantino, Representative David Coughlin, Jr. We speak with one voice. May you go govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Robert Craven, Sr., Representative Grace Diaz, and Representative John Edwards. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Deborah Falella and Representative Blake Filaili. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Kathleen Fogarty, Representative Raymond Gallison, Jr. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Antonio Geruso, Representative Arthur Handy. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Joy Hearn, Representative Raymond Hull. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Robert Jacquard and Representative Raymond Johnston. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Catherine Kazarian, Representative Kale Keeble, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Brian Pratt Patrick Kennedy, Representative Robert Lancia, and Representative Charlene Lima. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative John Lombardi, Representative Karen Macbeth. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Shelby Maldonado, Representative Jan Malik. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Michael Marcello, Representative Kenneth Marshall. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Carol Hagan McEntee, Representative Donald McKiernan, Representative James McLaughlin. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Joseph McNamara, Representative Helio Mello, Representative Mary Duffy Messier. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Patricia Morgan, Representative Michael Mori. Representative Robert Nartolillo. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Eileen Norton and Re Representative Jared Nunes. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative William O'Brien, Representative Jeremiah O'Grady, Representative Thomas Palangio. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Robert Phillips, Representative Justin Price. Please. 
May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Aaron Regenberg, Representative Daniel Riley, Representative Sherry Roberts, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion, Representative Deborah Ruggiero, Representative Patricia Serpa, Representative Joseph Shakarsi. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Scott Slater, Representative Joseph Solomon Jr., Representative Teresa Ann Tanzi, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Carlos Tobin, Representative Joseph Trillo, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Representative Stephen Ucci, Representative Anastasia Williams, Representative Thomas Winfield, we speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Central Falls Mayor James Diosa, Cranston Mayor Alan Fung, Cumberland Mayor William Murray. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. East Providence Mayor Thomas Rose, Johnston Mayor Joseph Palancena. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Newport Mayor Jean Marie Napolitano. North Providence Mayor Charles Lombardi. Pawtucket Mayor Donald Grebian. We speak with one voice. May you govern with wisdom and compassion. Providence Mayor Jose Lurza, Warwick Mayor Scott Avedison, Woonsocket Mayor Lisa Baldini Hunt. Before my remarks, I just want to remind you all that you should have received two postcards, and we encourage you to sign these postcards and put in your address, one for your senator and one for your representative. If you don't know who those people are, put in your address and we'll complete the postcards and deliver them, personally deliver them for each of you. I would like to also thank all senators and representatives who came today who haven't already been mentioned. Treasurer Seth Magaziner, Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea, Mayor Scott Averdesian from Warwick, and Mayor James Diosa from Central Falls. Let me also thank um, Marie, Maria Montaneo, Director of the Behavioral Health and Development and Diabetes and Disabilities in Hospitals. And now on behalf of the Rhode Island Interfaith Coalition to Reduce Poverty, we thank you faith leaders for reminding us that ancient texts call for wisdom to take root in an honored people. And all of our traditions admonish us to care for the poor. We may come from many communities of faith, but we are united in our commitment to those who struggle for shelter and food, for health care and education, for decent work and adequate income. 
And we thank you, elected leaders, to whose names we have given voice, for your willingness to work for sound legislation and public policies that promote economic well-being for all Rhode Islanders. You come from all corners of this state and from all socioeconomic groups, but we trust that you will keep in your hearts love for the cause of human welfare and a dedication to the common good. And then we thank all of you gathered here for this eighth annual vigil to speak with one voice to reduce poverty. May we this day be inspired, be filled with new enthusiasm, be ready to see fresh opportunity, new perspectives, and unnoticed avenues for action and resolution. In the name of all that we call holy, may we be keepers of the dream in 2016 and in all the years to come. And may we have a healthy, a productive, wise, and compassionate new year. May it be so. My friends, we join together this afternoon as faithful witnesses to the many miracles that bless our nation, our state, our city, and our religious communities. The miracle of God's creation that we see in the daily renewal of this magnificent planet the miracle of humanity's creation, from language to poetry, from engineering to architecture, from the work of our hands to the work of our minds, and the miracle of our relationships with one another, relationships that go beyond our family and beyond our kin, relationships that are based not on cultural or linguistic or national or even religious affinities, but rather the attachments that form because we recognize the inherent beauty of our differences, because we recognize that the quality of our lives depends upon the quality of our neighbors' lives. Because we recognize that poverty, racism, violence, exploitation, and injustice are desecrations against God's name. And because we recognize that our neighbors just like us, were created B'Tselem Elohim, the Hebrew words for in the image of God. This afternoon we have prayed together for fairness and justice. We have listened to the inspiring words of our community's religious leaders and political leaders. We have heard the sound of the shofar the ram's horn, calling us to arise from our slumber. Now we must move from prayer to deed, from word to action. Now we must get out from behind our screens, our laptops, our smartphones, and like our prophet Moses, confront the economic and social inequalities we see each day. In the spirit of faithfulness, and as we work together, may this new year be blessed by gratitude, by righteousness, and by our profound commitment to welcome and embrace the stranger, our neighbor, our loved one, 
the word of God. And let us say, Amen.